In his major league debut and a young ball player from MacArthur High School was named American League Rookie of the Month. For more on Instant Replay tonight, let's join our Larry Ramirez. How about that? These two young guys are just Great. so fun to watch and I think stars in the making. It was Miller time in Oakland and Young was not restless during the first month of the season. Coming up tonight on Instant Replay. Bryce Miller making his major league debut. Do it. That was in 2019. High fastball swing and a miss. Your Braunfels High School alum Bryce Miller made his MLB debut on Tuesday and he had a perfect game for five and one third of an inning. He was on fire. Today was equally as good in his second start versus the Astros and his Unicorns head coach knows Miller's success is good for local baseball. The 2-2. Two -two. Undrafted out of MacArthur High School, Rangers third baseman Josh Young is on the rise. He played so well to open the season. He was named American League Rookie of the Month for April, and he capped off the month with his first career grand slam at any level. Do you like Ryder up against the ropes like this? No, he should be going forward, like uh, uh, Chris said earlier. Well, and a one-two, and that just sapped all the strength out of John Ryder, and he's Ooh. down. Canelo fought in Guadalajara, Mexico last night in front of 51,000 fans. The champ, who's also one of the pound for pound best boxers in the world, called the fight a historic moment. Plus, he broke his opponent's nose. SA boxer Kendo Castaneda won here in town to grab a title belt. Plus, SAFC is rolling the dice in Las Vegas. UTSA baseball's on fire. And the UIL baseball and softball playoffs are heating up. All that and much more tonight, Tim, on Instant Replay. Do you get an Courtney extra point for breaking the nose? No, no, it just sounds good. Style points? Yeah. All right. Broke his later. nose, bro. <laughs> we'll see you a little bit. Coming up on the night beat, he's being called a hero, and he's only in the seventh grade. How this middle school student was not only able to save his school bus driver from a dangerous situation, but also all of his fellow students on board. And the calls are growing for charges to be filed in connection with the death of a man who was put into chokehold by another subway rider in New York, who's stepping into protest now. And so much history can be found in the smallest of places and things like this sign on Fort Sam Houston. We speak to the family who cherishes it. As we kick off Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, here's a story of a little known historic marker at Fort Sam Houston dedicated to the Pershing Chinese. Yeah, in 1917, General John per J. Pershing brought more than 400 Chinese to Fort Sam Houston. They'd helped the U.S. Army in Pershing's failed pursuit of Pancho Villa after his notorious raid on Columbus, New Mexico. In tonight's History Untold, Jesse Degollado talks to some of their descendants. That's my mother. Josefina Dong's mother from Mexico met her husband from China in a San Antonio boarding house. He'd also been in Mexico among the Chinese who risked their lives helping the U.S. Army. Yes, because a bunch of yeah, was killing them. There's a picture of Chinese men hung at the railroad station. While many had already fled Mexico however they could, this vacant plot of land at Fort Sam Houston was the camp where more than 400 of Pershing's Chinese lived under the protection of the U.S. Army, including Josefina Dong's father, but he rarely talked about the past. They don't talk about something that's, you know, that's not a happy thing. Yet once here, it said they cleared land for Kelly Field and Camp Stanley ahead of World War I. What's on the historic marker is more than Christina Liu ever knew about her great-great-grandfather, <laughs> other than what was in a school textbook. But it was just like a short little paragraph about General Purging, nothing about Purging Chinese. We don't learn about this in history. Out of their very meager beginnings, they've given us priceless opportunities for us to do better. Amid the headstones, unlike all the others at Mission Park South. Many of those laid to rest here are Persian Chinese who wanted to be buried near one another, united in life and death by their amazing journey. Jesse De Guillado, KSET 12 News. Happening around America, the National Action Network will join growing calls for the Manhattan District Attorney to file charges in the chokehold death of Jordan Neely. There have been rallies calling for the same thing across New York City. Protesters taking to the streets starting in Union Square and heading inside to 63rd Street and Lexington Avenue subway station. 
A grand jury could be convened next week to hear evidence in that case. This all comes as the attorney for the Marine veteran involved in the chokehold death of Neely issued a statement this week expressing condolences over the awful tragedy. Well, California is one step closer to approving reparation payments for black residents there. A task force created to examine possible reparations voted to approve its recommendations yesterday. The recommendations call for a formal apology from the state for slavery and would potentially provide billions of dollars in payments to descendants of slaves living in California. The task force will consider the recommendations at its next meeting in June before sending them on to the state legislature for approval. Governor Gavin Newsom formed the task force in 2020 to examine the harm slavery caused and the discrimination that followed for decades. This next story caught on camera. Having a medical emergency at the wheel can be dangerous for the driver and any passengers on board. That is exactly what happened in this video out of Detroit involving a school bus full of children. But as ABC's Gio Benitez reports, a young man on that bus's heroic actions got everyone off the bus safely. They were the dramatic moments a school bus driver had a medical emergency just outside of Detroit. She radios for help. But before she can pull the bus over, she passes out, the bus veering into oncoming traffic. That's when a brave 13-year-old, 7th grader Dylan Reeves, springs into action, grabbing the steering wheel and slowly pushing on the brakes, urging his schoolmates to call for help. I don't care! Someone call 911! A lot of people calling you a hero right now. Is that weird for you? I don't know. It just feels good. But how did he know how to drive that bus? Well, it turns out he's been carefully watching his dad drive for years. I bet you never thought that here he was so young, but he was really absorbing everything that you were teaching him so young. Yeah, he, uh, he definitely has always been attentive to his surroundings. Since that day, the calls and letters just haven't stopped. Congratulations on your quick thinking. But on that day, Dylan didn't think anything of his heroic actions. I know when he first came home, he was like, all he did was stop the bus. Wasn't expecting anything out of it. No. The local school board giving Dylan an award. Congratulations. <laughs> it's no surprise to anyone that he someday hopes to be a first responder like a police officer or firefighter. He saved everyone. He's a hero. And we're so proud of him. We love you. Yes. I love you, buddy. He deserves all the recognition in the world for this. Yeah. Gio Benitez reporting a humble hero there. Dylan has been able to speak with the bus driver since all this happened. She said she's very proud of him and that she's doing well. A hero indeed. All right, let's go back outside with live camp here tonight. Temperatures in the 70s here in San Antonio. I don't know if you remember what you did a year ago today, but if you do, you probably remember that it was incredibly hot outside. In fact, one year ago today, we actually set the record high for May 7th, 101 degrees. Today, whopping 21 degrees cooler than that, thanks to the cloud cover and those passing light showers here in San Antonio. We only had an official high of 80 degrees, so it was pretty mild out there. But looking ahead, still pretty stuffy out there as we head into our Monday, especially if we can find some breaks in the clouds. Upper 80s, low 90s feeling even warmer, and then temperatures are back down in the 80s for the rest of the week with those rain chances in the forecast. So we'll have another full look at this week ahead and time it out coming up in just a few, Tim. Quite sure what I did last year was complain about how hot it was. <laughs> I'm positive all that's I can what remember. you did. <laughs> there is a new King of England and his name is Charles. The highlights from the second day of first King coronation since 1937. I never complain. <laughs> It was a day 70 years in the making. King Charles III and Queen Camilla formally crowned in a historic ceremony at Westminster Abbey yesterday. And the celebration is still happening with more expected this week. ABC's Inez de la Cutara has the highlights and what's to come next. Across the UK, royal enthusiasts holding coronation big lunch events in honor of the newly crowned king and queen. Now we have a new king. We want to enjoy it. We want to embrace it. We want to celebrate it. 
from Regent Park to Downing Street. Thousands coming together to celebrate the historic day, including U.S. First Lady Jill Biden attending a coronation lunch hosted by British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. And after Queen Elizabeth II's coronation chicken, members of the public now encouraged to make their own coronation quiche made with spinach and beans. Sunday evening, the King also celebrated with a concert at Windsor Castle, featuring the likes of Katy Perry and Lionel Richie. The Prince and Princess of Wales making a surprise appearance, greeting coronation concert goers. As my grandmother said when she was crowned, coronations are a declaration of our hopes for the future. And I know she's up there, fondly keeping an eye on us, and she'll be a very proud mother. Pa, we are all so proud of you. The King and Queen releasing a statement, thanking the public for the outpouring of support, saying they were deeply touched. It's the first time we've heard from them since Saturday's ceremony, full of pageantry and ancient rituals, followed by the biggest military procession since Queen Elizabeth II's coronation. It's a wonderful occasion. None of us, except for my 95-year-old mother-in-law, have experienced a coronation before. And Monday has been declared a holiday in the UK. It's been dubbed the big help out and members of the public are being encouraged to take advantage of the day to try volunteering. In Esdala Quatera, ABC News, London. Well, doesn't a free trip to Disney sound nice? Will it be even nicer having it be a surprise why this group of 100 people were chosen to get such a gift? This was an unforgettable weekend for 100 hand-picked teachers who not only got a free trip to Disney, but were part of the daily parade. It all happened ahead of Teacher Appreciation Week that begins tomorrow. The 100 teacher celebration at Disney Imagination Campus pays tribute to imaginative elementary, middle, and high school teachers from 39 states. It's something that I've dreamed of since a kid, just to be on a float with Mickey Mouse. It's just, <laughs> I can't even put it into words. All you can say is magical. I've never been thanked this way before. Um, I have been thanked for being a teacher in the last 24 hours, possibly more than all of my years of teaching combined. It fills me with emotion. And they deserve it. The experience was offered coast to coast at both Disneyland Resort in, Cal Resort in California and the Walt Disney World Flor in Florida. And uh, Tim. Oh, congratulations. That's great. <laughs> I, didn't think, I didn't think he was going to do, do the weather. <laughs> Let's do, I can't do I can't do the yes. How am I supposed to transition to weather now? You asked for it. OK, yes. that was wonderful. Thank you, Tim. Um, yes. So weather wise this morning, we had some overachieving thunderstorms, especially across portions of the Plains. Some of us, at least closer to San Antonio, just had some light to moderate rain. Let's take a look at some of those rainfall totals since midnight. About five hundredths of an inch over at SA International. Over a tenth in Tilden, but really the winners in terms of higher rainfall totals across our southeastern counties. About an inch of rain fell in Kennedy and almost two inches in Quero out there in DeWitt County. All, all almost an inch in Floresville as well, 0.24 in Smiley. Really, I will say though, this is the area that's doing the best in terms of drought. You can see that we still have some work to do though, especially the farther west that we go, have some exceptional drought conditions in place across portions of the hill country, even stretching over to the Highway 90 corridor there in Medina County. So yes, we will see what we can find over the next several days. And this actually is in from the Climate Prediction Center, depicting what rainfall amounts could look like as we head into Mother Day weekend next weekend. All of this green that encompasses the state of Texas above average predictions. So we'll keep eyes on that as well. But this is what we're looking at in terms of rain right now on the radar. Again, as we were talking about earlier, we had some light rain moving through portions of Medina County near Hondo there. A few pockets of moderate rain, especially just south of Highway 90 that stretches farther off to the southwest with that activity that continues to move through portions of Zavala County, stretching down to Dimmit and even far southern Maverick County as well. 
well. And we're still keeping eyes on this little thunderstorm in northern Val Verde County that does look like it's weakening still as it approaches the Juno area. Still, I think a few showers will be possible as we head into the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures in the 70s for most of us, except for Del Rio checking in at 81 degrees this hour. 74 here in San Antonio, 75 in Pleasanton, as well as Hondo, 79 over in Catula out there in LaSalle County. Tomorrow morning, a muggy start here in San Antonio, low 70s expected with the cloud cover in place. And yes, a few isolated showers to a stray thunderstorm possible throughout the day. As we head into the afternoon, a few more peaks of sunshine certainly possible, helping daytime highs crank up into the upper 80s and low 90s. 91 is that forecast high here in San Antonio, 93 in Pleasanton, 90 over in Gonzales, 93 in Uvalde. But with the humidity in place, those feels like temperatures, what it feels like to your body when you step outside in the mid to upper 90s and maybe even the triple digits in spots. So if you are planning on staying outside for extended periods of time, be sure to stay hydrated and keep the water bottle handy. Low 70s expected across the board for those morning lows here in town over the next several days. Highs though in the 80s and that is all thanks to those daily chances to find some rain and a couple storms move across portions of south central Texas. That low pressure system still hanging out off to our west and that means that southwest flow is still expected to be with us as well sending those disturbances through the state of Texas. So again it's not going to be for everybody each and every day but we are expecting some activity on the radar each and every day. So a lot to monitor and of course we're talking about next weekend could potentially see those higher rain chances. So that's something to check back in on as we get more details into this week, guys. Don't worry, Mickey will have his weather app ready. It's going to be real interesting to see if that old key card opens the gate tomorrow. <laughs> Still to come, a certain ragtag group of cosmic superheroes that return to the theaters to take on a new rom-com and long-reigning champ, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Who filled in the seats? I am Groot. Find out next. I miss you so much. There's an aching inside of me. The romantic drama Love Again opened weekly in fifth place, earning $2.4 million. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret moved down to fourth place on ticket sales of $3.4 million. Evil Dead Rise fell to third, scaring up $5.7 million. Watch and learn. After four weekends on top, the Super Mario Brothers movie settled for second, grossing $18.6 million for a domestic total of $518 million. I'm going to tell you something. I'm Star-Lord. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 easily topped the chart in its debut weekend. The latest Marvel Cinematic Universe adventure opened with $114 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Courtney's so lost when it comes to those. I don't know how many movies are there that they can make like that. Too many to catch up on. <laughs> a UTSA golfer is all set to play in the San Antonio Regional this week with eyes on advancing to the national championships. And it might feel like deja vu for San Antonio FC as they face Las Vegas for the second week in a row for a preview of what's on instant replay. Here's Larry Ramirez. All right, so SAFC got the win tonight. Let's hope it's the start of a new winning streak for them. Entering today, San Antonio FC hasn't won a league match in a month, settling for three draws and one loss during that stretch tonight on Instant Replay. That's still a good build up here. Slip through. Bending up for what a spectacular goal from Sam Adenarin. Coming off back to back draws, including last week at home versus the Las Vegas Lights. SAFC faced the Lights again tonight, where they broke through for a win to pick up three very much needed points, thanks in part to a new member of the squad. It's a really tough course, so it's very well known, and getting to play it pretty much every other day here throughout the whole year, um, I feel like it's definitely an advantage just knowing the course. Yes. You can still find the trouble, I do pretty often, but it's, uh, but it's awesome. 
UTSA star golfer Cameron Carrion has the home course advantage this week in the San Antonio Regional, but the TPC Oaks course is tough no matter how often you play it. Hear from Cam tonight just hours before she tees off tomorrow morning. Plus, tonight is part two of our one-on-one -on -one with UIW head football coach Clint Killo. Plus, we've got boxing, two tenors doing great things in the show, the NBA playoffs, and a brand new scholar athlete from Marshall High School. All that and much more coming up, guys, in just a few minutes. Broken noses coming our way. That's right. Boxing Canelo. He broke the guy's nose. Yes, you're not yeah. breaking anybody's nose. No. Just telling us about it. Thank you, Larry. Good news, good news. We'll be right back.